loneliness is a signal that something is right. Loneliness is MTV's reality show, The Real World. Five Americans suffer from gluten-free diet. Snooky is everything that is wrong with our society today. I love this quote by Jim Carrey, and it can even lead to premature miscarriage. In France, we arrived 12 hours after Snooky. We weren't in the mood to go out that night. <laughs> I head over to my partner's house, and we have a ritual that we've been doing for the past year or so. We each say, the thing I love about you most today is going through a divorce. Snooky, you're not welcome here. Thank you. Hi, everyone. It's me. If this is your first time watching this, then hi, it's still me. I'm just brown. So since it's the end of the month, I decided to try a different type of video. Something where I tell you more about my personal side. It's still gonna be hilarious, don't worry. But I wanted to talk about something that I experience and I think a lot of other people do in life as well. And that is loneliness. I feel very lonely sometimes. And despite the amazing fan base that I have, I have days where I feel like the loneliest person on earth. In today's video, I wanted to take a look at TED Talks, which is one of my favorite channels on YouTube. I think it's amazing, educational, and gives you some really amazing speakers from around the world. However, for some reason, there's a video and it's called the simple cure for loneliness and unfortunately if you look at the like to dislike ratio there seems to be a discrepancy because i don't think people agree with the speaker and her methods of curing loneliness i think she got it wrong is what i'm saying comments like she clearly has no idea what loneliness feels like <laughs> This clown has no idea what she's talking about. Homeless? Then just buy a house, it's that easy. Does a TED talk about loneliness. Talks about pre-sleep time with her boyfriend and trips to France with her girlfriends. Okay, so clearly she doesn't understand what loneliness is. So what I thought I'd do is i take a second to break down the video and also explain how I feel and hopefully other people in the same circumstance can at least feel some sort of vindication. Maybe I can help, I don't know. So the one thing people seem to agree about me is that I'm very open about my mental health. Let me tell you why that is. My favorite guy, Robin Williams, he said this quote, I used to think the worst thing in life was to end up all alone. It's not. The worst thing in life is ending up with people who make you feel alone. My favorite comedians and stuff could be honest about who they are as people. Why am I out here lying and pretending to be happy every day when I'm not? So me personally, I'm an only child. I'm an OC. Come from a little broken home. One parent zip, left. I grew up like that. That's where a lot of it comes from. I feel the need to have people around me and to make sure everyone's okay because I have a fear that everyone's just going to leave. That is getting really deep too fast. Someone probably clicked on this video for the first time like, all right, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm usually funnier. Before we start the video, two quick things. Firstly, I am also starting another channel and it's called 16 Leo, 16 Leo. It's a channel that I've wanted to start for ages and I hope if you like this content, you'll consider subscribing to that as well. You can either search it up or go onto my channel and just click this button right here. Thank you to anyone and everyone who subscribes. And secondly, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor. Before the next part of my video, I'd like to give a big thanks to today's sponsor, Honey. For those of you who don't know, Honey is the number one online shopping tool in America. I make sure I use it with every online purchase since it works on almost every site that I use to shop at. And genuinely, it's turned out to be like my shopping sidekick. Honey automatically searches the internet for promo codes so that you don't have to. Why pay the full price for something you're planning on buying when you can get an automatic discount on it? It's so easy to use. You literally just hit that little button at the top of your browser and it automatically searches for promo codes. These discount codes are already out there for people to use. Honey is just locating them and using them for you. And look, I'm brown. It's satisfying to watch, okay? Seeing the original total lowered by so much after using Honey is like a free endorphin hit for me. If you guys want to get Honey, you can add it to your browser for free at joinhoney.com 16leo. It's literally free to add and you'll be saving money on practically every online purchase. You can thank me later. Thanks again, honey. Whew, okay, let's see what she has to say. Loneliness is an emotional state that we have when we're feeling disconnected. But our need for connection is ingrained in our DNA. Loneliness is a signal, just like fight or flight, that something isn't right. So far, so good. I don't see an issue with that. What I do also like is that side mic that people have. I wish I had one because it just makes things you say sound better. Like you can say anything with a side mic and it sounds a little more professional. I took a shit today. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't even wipe. 
and I'm never going to. <laughs> One in five Americans suffer from loneliness, which means if you haven't personally suffered from loneliness, it's almost guaranteed that somebody you know closely has. Okay, well, that's a great statistic. I do want to just uh, explain that this video is on YouTube and YouTube broadcasts to more than just America. I would probably get a world statistic on that, but all right. It can cause depression and it can even lead to premature death. <laughs> I thought she was going to say premature ejaculation. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of guys sitting in the audience like She's lying. She is I am good. Yo, what'd she say? Premature what? Premature death. Damn, that's even worse than what I thought she said. Premature death. Okay, way to scare the audience. I mean look, coming from someone who's experienced it and does very often. Calm down, please. <laughs> you can say that about anything. Lack of food can cause premature death. Lack of toilet can cause premature diarrhea. Lack of earphones can cause premature listening to Nickelback. I understand what you're saying, but you don't have to go to those lengths. But now more than ever, we're living alone. We're spending more time online and less time making meaningful in-person connections. So today I'm going to offer one solution. I don't like people who do that. I can't deal with, I'll offer one solution. She goes to a drive-thru, she's like, yes, I'll have two Big Macs, one Coke, and zero fries, because I'm on a diet. Just chill with your hands, please. This is not a Kanye West concert, you can put your hands down. When I was a kid, I had a really hard time fitting in. I wanted to do whatever I could to belong and to not feel lonely. All I wanted was to find connection. I was going to be popular. I feel like this woman over here probably doesn't understand that it comes in different forms and is fueled by different things. Mine is caused by my broken home when I was young. It was also caused by the fact that when I was eight years old, I had to move country and set up a different life before I even got comfortable with my original one. I think those things really affect your inner being without you knowing. So what she's talking about is wanting to fit in to school, which is definitely something that a lot of people have to go through. But I feel like there's different ways that we can interpret loneliness and she's just not really coming through with those theories. And when I was 20 years old, auditions for MTV's reality show, The Real World came into town. When we think about reality TV, and we generally fall into one of two camps. The first camp is like, you literally could not pay me enough to go on a reality TV show. And then the second camp, go on a reality TV show? <laughs> Honey, I should have my own reality TV show. <laughs> I would be the next Snooki for sure. Damn, we got a comedian over here. I didn't think this was gonna be a funny TED talk. She wrote some jokes about loneliness. She's like, hey, what a lonely person say to all his friends? Nothing, bro. He ain't got no friends. Ha <laughs> It's a serious issue. I don't know why you guys are laughing. <laughs> why you came here with jokes? <laughs> what the hell? And at 21 years old, I moved to Brooklyn as part of seven strangers picked to live in a house. <laughs> I forgot to tell you, I'm going to write down all her strategies. So the first strategy apparently is join a reality TV show, which I think is fantastic. So to cure your loneliness, apparently you have to join a reality TV show. And I already know if I joined a reality TV show, they'd put me in some crazy show and call me Raj because they would never use my real name. So I'd have to be speaking like this every time and being like, oh, she's so sexy. I wish I could grab her by the butt. I, I know I'm gonna have to do that. I'm not sure everyone who's experiencing loneliness has the opportunity to go onto reality TV. The real world didn't bring me connection like I thought it would. In fact, if anything, I was lonelier than I had ever been during those 15 minutes of fame. Let me get this straight, buddy. You're telling me that being on a reality TV show, a show that pretends to be real, actually brought you some fake friends? You had some fake connections on a fake show? No! no. That's, That's just, just crazy, crazy talk. talk. TED Talk really outdid themselves with this goal. You may have heard of Blue Zones. I have, but they are called the Crips and they're in Compton, so I don't think we are talking about the same zones. I would love to hear your theory on Blue Zones. Blue Zones are areas all over the world where researchers have found that people live the longest and happiest lives. But Bea, how do we create our own anchors of connection? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> nice. nice. 
but better. How do we actually get into those communities if our community doesn't do that shit? You ever think about that? Not every community actually does this. I'd love to hear her theories. I think she's gonna tell us to be like, just start a group. Just start a group. Just get your friends, start a group. I feel like she's missing the big point on the fact that a lot of people who feel lonely cannot make those connections because we haven't been taught to in this sort of world. We're in a different world. We're not in the 1980s anymore. Nobody's just doing cocaine and be like, hey, nice to meet you. I've, I've seen you before. We're all on our phones. We're a bit too scared to approach someone. I'm just scared to talk to people in general half the time in case I say something that they don't agree with and we have beef for the rest of our lives. How do you form relationships now? That's my question. Bea, can you, can you tell me? The most powerful way to create an anchor is through ritual. Ritual is repeated action plus intention. That's called a schedule. <laughs> but yeah, okay, call it a ritual. Call it whatever you want. It's not a schedule. It's a ritual. How about that? Deleting my browser history every five minutes. It's not a schedule. It's a ritual. Thanks. Bea, you just changed my life. Thanks, girl. We've been gathering around fires forever. For me and my girlfriends, our couches act as the metaphorical fire that we gather around. Every Monday night, we throw on our leggings, we head to one of our houses, we pour ourselves some rosé, we pile onto the couch, and we just talk. All right, Bea, let me write that down. So the cure for loneliness is to pile up with your friends on a Monday on a couch. What are you, what are you, stupid? I don't care that you don't have any. Go get your friends. Go get that cardboard cutout of Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah, get Madonna and a gap tooth ass. We all got some friends. We got some rosé. Let's watch friends while we be friends. Okay, let me befriend your friends. Now, they're not your friends. They're my friends because you defriended them and I befriended them. Bayar. You're missing the whole point. The people don't have these people. Some people don't even have the couch. I don't think many people listening to this TED talk are like, oh, why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I get my friends? Do you think any of them are in that position? They just have friends to call up and aren't doing it because they haven't thought of that idea. Lots of people don't know how to make those connections to get friends that close. I don't think it's hard to have a conversation on the internet. I think you can be acquaintances. It's not like a sitcom. It's hard to make these human connections, especially in this day and age. We've ritualized Monday nights as a time where we come to connect and fill our tanks for the rest of the week. But on lots of Mondays, we come with our tanks empty, like going through a divorce or a miscarriage. Every Monday? How many friends you got gonna go through a divorce every Monday? What the fuck are you guys doing? On, on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. What are you guys doing? Every Monday, uh, Cynthia comes here. Oh man, I got my back blown up again, but to me. Yup, but we're getting a divorce again. <clears throat> yeah, I married him on Monday, but he became a bitch by Friday, I'll tell you that much. But back to what I was saying before. For instance, I moved to Australia two years ago, and I knew nobody there because I'm out of school and I couldn't afford to go to university. I know, sad story for another time. But genuinely, like I got to a point where I went on the Reddit thing. I went to Reddit Melbourne, new to Melbourne, don't have any friends, blah, blah, blah. And people were supportive, but it didn't always seem to materialize. I was at that point in my life where I genuinely went on the internet <laughs> looking for people. Because you can't just go out in public. When you don't have a place to go, who are you gonna meet? You can go to the gym, but you're not really gonna make too many friends there. You go there to work out. You can go to a cafe, but usually everyone there is with someone. Going to movies alone is <laughs> sad for me. And every now and again, you can take classes, but if you take them during the daytime, all you're gonna meet is Margaret and her friends who are 90 years old. And no offense, they're amazing, but they swear too much. Fuck you, Margaret. Why do you keep swearing at me? All I'm saying is that in this new generation, if you don't have friends from school or from college, it's not easy to get them. After Monday nights, I head over to my partner's house and we have a ritual that we've been doing for the past year or so. Bitch. <laughs> what? Are you, what? Did she say her partner? You got friends and a partner and you still lonely? Well, you got you probably got two parents who love you and call you every day. You're like, ugh, get off the phone, dad. I'm being lonely right now. Oh, you know how bad the partner must feel. Like, bro, I've been, I'm here the whole. You're saying this while I'm on the couch. You're saying you're lonely. What? I can't wait to hear this ritual that she has with the partner. This is gonna be good. Where before bed, we each say the thing I love about you most today is. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> Tell your partner what you love about them. If you're lonely, tell your partner what you love about them. Oh wait, you probably don't have one because you're lonely and if you weren't lonely, you'd have a partner. 
I mean, I admit, I admit that's a very cute thing to do. Sure. <laughs> but it doesn't have anything to do with this conversation. When I'm lonely, I just get my boyfriend and I say, hug me, bro. And then he hugs me. I feel like you came to the TED talk loaded with the wrong type of ammunition. You picking up what I'm putting down? You went to the circus while you're afraid of clowns. You know what I'm saying? You became a lifeguard, but you can't swim. I feel like you're in the wrong position to be talking about this. This is like Jeff Bezos coming to TED Talks being like, so here's my tips to growing a full head of hair. Easy enough to do when we're feeling in love. Not that easy to do when we're in a fight. It would generally look like this. Hey babe, do, do you want to do the thing I love about you, Ma? No. Do you want to just like try it? Psst, psst, not. Right now, I'm not in the mood. Is your boyfriend five? What, what? What's wrong with him? Why is he talking like that? Huh? Hey, hey babe, do you, do you want to do that thing that you that you, that you told me about? No. Okay, but please don't be mean to me again. You keep saying how my mom died. What are you doing to this man? He sounds like a broken person. <laughs> he just broke him down to what you want him to be. Say what you like about me. I like your hair. You said that before. I, know, I, I like your eyebrows. Oh, no, really? What I could have never guessed this ritual would do is expand my capacity for kindness and compassion. And now, when we're in a fight, sometimes I even say the thing I love about him most first. I love how that didn't change anything. She's like, it expanded my... <laughs> is expand my capacity for kindness and compassion. And now, when we're in a fight... <laughs> it's so funny! She said that it expanded her passion for kindness and all that other shit, and she's like, and now, when we're in a fight... That didn't change. She got kinda, but they're still fucking fighting every other day. <laughs> now, when we're in a fight, I say that his eyebrows look good. <laughs> oh man, I just cured loneliness, what can I say? Recently, I took a trip to France with some of the same girlfriends who I spend Monday nights with. Landing in Paris was amazing and exactly like you'd think it was if you've never been. The cobblestone streets, the shutters, the windowsills with the flowers, the boots with the fur, with the fur. In France, meals are rituals. So dinners, for instance, they start later and last longer. And whether it's two people or 10 people, you sit down and you enjoy the meal for at least two hours and usually three. Okay, I wasn't gonna say anything about it, but when she said two hour dinners with friends, I was like, okay, I gotta. Bayo, not everybody has two hours to go to France and have dinner with friends that they don't have on a Monday. I hate to tell you that. Some of us work for a living. The ridiculous assumption that you think that everybody has, firstly, the money to go to France, secondly, the friends to go to France, thirdly, the friends who have the money to go to France, fourthly, the friends who have the money and the time to go to France, and fifthly, a boyfriend who's willing to come along with you. For a video about loneliness, this is some next level privilege, but I'm gonna write it down. The food takes a long time, no phones are out, and when the meal is over, you sit and you talk some more. Two hour dinners with friends in Paris. If you're ever feeling lonely, go to Paris, get your friends, have some two hour dinners. Gluten free, baby. Hey, if you're ever feeling lonely, have a baby with someone. Hey, are you feeling lonely? Why don't you have a threesome? How about that? Thanks, Bail. Day in and day out, the French go back to the table for their ritualized anchor of connection. I also just want to say something about her idolizing France, as if the people of France don't have problems of their own. This is like the grass is greener theory. When people looked at Dan Blalzerian before he became a big fraud scam artist type person, all the guys were like, I wish I had that life. Super yachts, super models, super beard, super broke. As a kid from South Africa, I love America. I used to look at it and be like, there is nothing more that I want to do than be in Hollywood. I just want to be in movies. I just want to be in all those roles, get the Oscars. And then you pull back the curtains, Harvey Weinstein, this, that. It's not what I signed up for. She's just enjoying the tourism life that France has to offer, not everything else, which is not how to cure loneliness at all. Our last stop in France was Nice. We arrived 12 hours after the Bastille Day attack where the truck driver drove through the fireworks celebration, tragically killing 84 people. We weren't in the mood to go out that night. So we went back to the apartment. We put on our leggings. We poured ourselves some rosé. We piled onto the couch and we just talked. I'm, I'm lost for words with that. 
Yo, she just talked about a tragic incident and she was like, I didn't feel like going out that night. We put on our leggings and we drank some rosé and talked. Oh, God. I think she's the least qualified to give advice on the subject that I've ever seen on my life. This is like someone from McDonald's trying to give you diet tips. I didn't think it was going to be this bad. I'm surprised it has as many likes as it does, honestly. And she had the audacity to say the simple cure for loneliness. Of course it's simple to you. You already have everything at your disposal. So my invitation to you today is simple. Don't do something new. Find something you're already doing. Do that thing over and over and over again. Can someone hit me with a far cry, please? Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? It's doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. This woman is explaining insanity. She's basically saying, this is how to become Joker 2019 explained. Don't listen to her. Do new things. How are you going to know if you don't like it if you don't try? Thank you. This is one of the worst things that I've ever seen in my life. So this is the end of Bayo's TED talk and I just want to go over what she said one more time before I try and give you maybe my own little piece of advice. Alright, so Bayo's cures for loneliness are Join a reality TV show. If you're lonely, go on Jersey Shore. Pile up with your girlfriends on a couch on a Monday and drink rosé. Never mind that your job finishes at 9pm and you only get home at 10pm and you've been arguing with your spouse or significant other for the past two weeks. Never mind that. Pile up with your girlfriends on the couch. Drink some rosé, watch friends. Tell your partner what you love about them. Yep. And last but not least, two hour dinners with friends in Paris. As the great Kanye West and Jay-Z said, who was in Paris? That's right. Bayer and all her bitches. <laughs> That's all you gotta do to cure loneliness. Thanks, Bayer. You've cured absolutely nothing. You're like Michael Jackson's doctor. So I was thinking of a way to end this video, and upon re-watching the TED talk, I realized that Bayer didn't really ever describe loneliness to people who haven't felt it. So loneliness to me happened the other day. I woke up from my bed, and I realized that nobody was next to me. And although I have a lot of people messaging me, I realized that there were only a handful of people and even then, I don't know if they'd respond if I told them that I was feeling alone. I'm in a lockdown now, so I couldn't even see them if I wanted to. I was so lonely that I got up and wanted to cry. It was so sad. The last piece of advice that I have is probably something that maybe you don't want to hear. In my time of being lonely, I don't know if I've ever cured it. Best thing for me, when I feel lonely, is to be okay with being alone. I don't think it's about finding people or finding relationships per se. I think if I can sit down and genuinely enjoy my own company from day to day, I'll never be let down if other people come and then leave my life. Because you can't control other people. So what I do is when I have people around, I enjoy the company while it's here. And if it goes and never comes back, I try to be okay with the situation. And that's obviously easier said than done. But it's really helped me in my life to become more okay with the fact that, yeah, I'm going to be alone some days. I have everything I need at my disposal. I have food and shelter. I have parents. I have friends who are sometimes there. And I have the internet and you guys. What more could I really want? So yeah, at some point, I'm going to get a little GT golden retriever and he's going to be my buddy for life. And maybe at some point, I'll find a significant other who will then bear my child and then I'm going to call my child Darren. Darren. But until that point in time, I'm a human. I'm going to feel these emotions, but I'm okay with it. And I hope that if you're someone watching this who feels the same way, that eventually you're okay with the position you're in as well. That's all I had to say about that. Thank you so much for watching the video. I'm sorry if you didn't like it. It's a bit of a different video, but I hope you do like this type of content because every now and again, I'll do a video like this. Love you guys. I'm out. Baby, when I pull up on you. I wanna